so we'll take this is the Clark Creek tiles right here in the fence. This is Barry's uh, racing the fuel right across from the ethanol. And I've talked to one of the engines a minute. Right? I just want to talk about it. Yeah, no, it's like 30 minutes, 30 or 40 Mary did, I've got a few bills to read off. Mary didn't do an agenda for us, so. We've got uh, right away management. We want them to talk first. Okay. We didn't. We don't have any minutes from the. Well, we've got minutes, but I would recommend that we not we not uh, approve them. Oh, you know, right. edit them a little bit okay. before we, we do that. Okay. But uh, right. nope. Nope. Five minutes. Minutes. you're rolling. Yeah, okay. we're rolling. Okay, we will call the uh, Grant County Drainage Board to order. Uh, this is April the 11th. We have three of five members present. Mr. Pinkerton and Mr. Cox are absent. Mr. Cates, myself, and Mr. Goff are in the room. We do have quorum. And so we will, uh, as I just mentioned prior to calling us together, I would uh, like to dispense with the reading of the minutes and we'll bring that back at our next meeting. So Jim, if you will walk us through the bills. We've got about five bills and I want to mention that map there and talk about Car Creek right after the bills. Uh, on Big, on Big Black Creek, we've got two bills from Bragg Excavating. Uh, one's $7,246. This was the clear and tore down trees on Ditch Bank, 800 feet, and hauling the, the woods back to a spot that it would be safe on uh, where it wouldn't be around James Walden's house. The next one is. Uh, Rather large bill on uh, done on TNR farms. This was to move out a lot of log jams and uh, rocks and silt that was under the 200 North Bridge and approximately a thousand feet and uh, slope the bank and rip wrap two washouts, approximately 40 tons of rip wrap equipment and labor. And this one is uh, eleven thousand two hundred fifty-eight dollars and eighty-eight cents. That's on Big Black Creek. There's a hundred some thousand in the fund. It's a Big Black Creek. Big Black Creek, both of them by Farmville. And that was the uh, the gentleman that requested all this was uh, Harold Turner. Harold Turner, yeah. And and then he still needs to do some another thousand feet before he pulls his machine off that. Uh, is all brushed and, and fell in. And then we have uh, Mitch Cook, as Cook's excavating has been out on Pipe Creek, the Richland Township, north side of Mirror on the Dillray farm. He's took out multiple log jams, uh, used an existing path through the woods made two years ago. And this bill, the first one is $1,330. And again, there's uh, over $100,000 in Pipe Creek Fund. I didn't have time to get that this morning. Mary normally gets that for me, but I know it's seemed like it's 180 or something yeah. like that. The other one was on the Glessner Farm and the Kendall Farms. Uh, just uh, log jams, medium, large, a couple small ones. But anyway, that total is $2,605. That's on Pipe Creek also, right? Yeah. Where's, where's that at? Yeah. That's on the, uh, okay, it's uh, between 900 West and County Line Road. Okay. Because they just say Mark got a farm there. Yeah. But it isn't in Grant County. Uh, well, Glessner owns that middle of that section before it gets to the County Line. Okay. Back in there. And then Miami County Surveyor is working on a log jam that has kind of moved downstream and, and Eric Bragg is going to do that one for uh, Miami County. I've talked to the surveyor. And it was, this was on the Kendall farm and the Glessner farm. Now the other one is, uh, was the north side of Mare in section 34 on the Dirk Brothers farms. Large jam just south of where the Fadley ditch outlets into Pipe Creek. We moved, removed a couple trees crossing from south of Lard of large jam and it's also two thousand six hundred and sixty dollars. So we gotta get these out by plant time. That's it for today. All right. As yeah. the uh, the uh, invoice is read, do you have any questions on? I'm not you won't make it or oh.
You make it now, second. I'll make the motion. All right, motion, Mr. Cates, to pay the uh, invoices as presented. Second. Second, Mr. Goff. Any other discussion or questions on those? Hearing none. All those in favor would say aye. 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 It's carried unanimously. All right. And then the Cart Creek problem is the tile's almost right under the fence there, and the power <clears> pole's <throat> near. They've got, we've met the utilities, they got the power pole saved right now, but there's a hole there. Uh, Mitch Cook mentioned it's about a 400 foot stretch. It's a 15 inch tile. He mentioned downsizing the tile. I talked to Wendell Cates this morning, and even though Wendell would have no water on this end, he's got a vested interest because he's paid tax to the north. And we, you know, we've worked on his farm to the north, but it's a 15, and I'm I'm opposed to it being any smaller because it does shed off that field right there north of 18, and we don't want them side ditches on either side of the road. On the east side of the property, right, right where you're pointing, that's where the hole is. It's been there about a year, but utilities have come in lately and saved her pole it's just off the side but you've got to cut the fence but we've talked about uh, if we move it over uh, tap into the catch basin move it over and then run it out away from the fence a little bit it'd be about 400 feet and uh, uh, cook excavate has got an estimate of about eleven thousand dollars and or seventeen thousand four hundred in the fund and I've just asked Wendell Cates to take a look at it and give me his opinion. So we're going to put it on hold. The power pole is not going to go nowhere because they've got it anchored a couple different directions now. Uh, they thought about just uh, Mitch working it and fixing it. We got to cut the fence because it's about right on over the fence. Well, whose fence is it? Uh, the racing fuel buries the racing fuel. Uh, yeah, he don't have no buried. problem cutting the fence. But it almost runs just right at the edge of the fence, that whole length of that property. Is there a culvert under the road anywhere? Not there? a surface pipe, but there is a, a, a underground pipe that runs a, a catch basin. All the ethanol plant plants water goes to 24 the other direction, but it still drains the side ditches north and south. <clears throat> so we still are obligated to keep those going for the, the water out front, and uh, we probably. The utilities is out there. We'll probably need a power hose. We may have a drag to excavate and come in and wash out the utilities because we need to connect to that riser and kind of bring it out away from the fence. But uh, just because uh, Wendell had invested interest out there, I want him to look over, look it over, and tell me what he thought. So it's kind of on hold right now. I talked to Mitch this morning, and I didn't want to spend this money unless I talked to the board and some of the guys that pay the ditch tax out there. When will this, when will they do this? This fall, this spring? Or fall? Yeah, he, he was ready to do it any time, but the problem is I and M just wanted to cut the fence and then they were gonna raise the pole up with a machine and then want to cook to work underneath it. He don't want to do that. In case anything goes on wrong, he's underneath the power line. So it needs moved out. That's we'll just put it on hold for right now. Because with the tornado, they didn't want anybody working underneath where they were working. Mm -hmm. But over here, they'll go ahead and lift it. And it's let, okay for somebody else yeah. to do it. <laughs> when it's not an emergency, huh? Yeah. But so, I, the pole's not going to fall in right away. I just want Wendell's advice. So we're just uh, taking that as information. And right. Do <coughs> uh, you think we'll have that back in two weeks? So on the 25th, I think it is. I, it's going to depend on what Wendell's up when it's going to He had to go to Ohio today, so he couldn't do it today. But he's going to look at it. All right. Um, do we have anything else scheduled for today? Right away, management's here to talk about the, the spray program. Him and, and uh, Raymond's been working together on this. But just uh, pretty much Chad Baker with right away management. Um, been hands on with the spray program since 2020. And when we decided to jump into this, we were putting a long term plan together. Uh, so we've already done three years of application, so, or two, um, three. And so it was time to evaluate the ditches and, and look at them. So I drove around and looked at everything that we've done or been doing after I received the list to just basically do a quick inspection to see whether we could rotate some things out 
Is it, is it clean enough? Is it not going to get away? Did we get a handle on it? Um, and then we're just going back and forth on this stuff. And it's a real rough paper that I put together. It's not really a quote because we're still in that process of he checks to make sure there's still funds to do it. You might have something scheduled to do some grinding or, or tile work, and then it can be bumped out, you know, and not be a big deal. So out of the ditches that I looked at, I think we're probably split it down the middle where there was about 11 of them that I felt. I put years on where they could be potentially a year or two on the rotation. So on the side of this sheet, that's there's a lot going on, but 2024, I would recommend it go back on, but it could go to 25. It's kind of just dependent on where we're at. Um, and then some of them that I felt needed to be hit again, and some of them I think we're doing work on, we're gonna have to probably hold off and put it in another year's rotation. The, the ones on Barron Creek, we'd like to, but we don't have the funds to spray Barron Creek. We still have one prong of Barron Creek left to cut and dredge. We spent thousands on erosion control here a while back on the Holloway and took some more dead trees down and it fun needs to build back up because they still got one prong out there they want to dredge and brush. It's a five five ditch tributary fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and on your paper is a gentleman the the orange my paper has got orange on it. Yours didn't come through the copier with no. the oranges, but they're just check marks. Um, I sent Chad a list of the ditches. He added on these dates on the left hand side with the 2023, 24, 2024, 25. Back and forth between the two of us. On the column that says 2023, he's got how much per foot for the ones that we're going to do this year, or that's how we're approaching them, to do the ones that he has at a price put on them and then chad i gotta come over to yours yeah because i made them a copy and i didn't make me a copy yeah so i don't have your notes <laughs> um back to the first page uh, on taylor creek on the first page you put 20 28 cents where i wrote again please because he he had taken it off and uh this is down towards jim's area where the teasel is real bad so we, he was willing to take Taylor Creek off this year, but by Jim's request for that part, he added that on. And then on the second page, Taylor Creek's on it again for the first section south of the sewer plant. What do you think, well, Kenny? I, I got a question. Max Faust. Uh-huh. That's all growing up right through there. Where he had those cows there. Mm -hmm. Is there a, is he a, is he still objecting since he don't have cattle? So. I don't know. I haven't talked to him for a good while. Yeah, he didn't really want to dredge or anything done down through there when the cattle were there. There's that little tree line where the brush is all grown before he gets to him. That's what was good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs cut. Yeah, yeah. Trees. Yeah. Is he on that little corner piece? Yes. 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 I don't know. Let me look into it and I'll try to contact this somebody. Well, what I'd get that is, is put him all you know, you go over there and spray and mm -hmm. Taylor Green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could kind of kill off some of that stuff and be sprayed some of that, even some of that standing stuff. Because uh -huh. they, they burnt some of that. He burnt some of that standing stuff over there over the 500, okay. Yeah, can I in interject as an excavator? When it goes to cleaning up a ditch though, if it's got a bunch of dead stuff, you got a bunch of broken stuff to chase. If you can cut it and collect it while it's alive, it all sticks together better. Just, I mean- yeah, I'd like to see that little area clear cut first. Yeah, I, versus, versus spraying the big stuff, Kenny. I just, I've cleaned up ditches that had dead trees on them and it sucks. It just makes more time, more cost. The law works down on me. Well, well <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, we went down through there and cleaned all that out. Right. Cut down the gyms and so forth. And, and we had a, a strip in there that Max 
throw the fit because he had cattle running in there. But he's past the cattle business now, so okay. I thought maybe we might. I'll look into that and talk to him. If, if we get it in time, Chad said he doesn't have a problem adding more to the list. Yeah, that's if you guys are good with the prices, and I don't think well, it's going to be. It, when they get crops in, they're going to lose crops, so we probably need to brush that this fall okay. and then spray it next year. Yep. Okay. Be as soon as we can do it. Yeah, there's definitely room or added ditches that can be started added to the list. I mean, I kind of look when I've set up programs with other counties, we kind of look at a annual budget on where we want to be targeted at and try and try and reach that goal. If I'm dropping 11, and I. I I'll know more once we concise everything to know about where our budget's been the last couple of years. I can make a guess. We're probably under that this year. Um, oh, yeah. You know, by because we dropped footage. Got a lot of footage. So um, there can be ones introduced. I'd like to put my eyes on that before we get here if I can, so I can fire some numbers off to you guys, make sure they're in that. I think our assumption is he drops 11, we pick up 11 in theory, you know, well, keep that same amount. I'll have the numbers a little bit tighter when I really, yeah. this is just With the really approval, I suggest we keep these two working on together. <laughs> it's going to work. No we, objection there. Any uh, objections to keep them working? Yeah. Uh, on the Barron Creek part, uh, he has numbers there, but I wrote no and a dollar sign because we don't have money in yeah. the account. Fair enough. That's Barron Creek, New Prairie, Harrison, Sugar Grove. They're all Barron Creek funds. It'll build up fast. We, we added on the Sweetser Improvement, Nina Lee on the back page and the Isaiah Wall and part of Deer, uh, Pipe Creek out towards the pit. And then Doyle Ferguson is on the front page, but he's actually a Chad sprayed the first part that Inyard did when he dug the first part and hasn't sprayed the second part yet, so the footage increased on it, on the Doyle Ferguson. That's Switzer Improvement, that's East of Murray, isn't it? That's Van Buren. Yeah, that's what we're getting at. And the Annie Glee hadn't been brushed yet, we're getting ready right. to get close for brushing. The, the Doyle Ferguson we got Inyard in on and dug, or brushed and dug and are to the point where we have it on the spray program and we uh, turners brought it in and had the rate lowered on the ditch because they don't need the money no more i mean they they came in and raised it a high number to get money in to do the stuff now they came in and lowered it sweets or improvement will be the same way when we get it done we can lower the assessment rate to accommodate the spray and hopefully not much more right and just just so we know, because I mean, everything with, with the way costs are going up, you have to be aware of where things are at. I'm really on a lot of where I'm at, and this is not just in Grant County, this would be in the 30 counties that do the work in. I was looking at about an average of a cent increase from last year, that's just chemical costs per foot. So you're looking at another $52 a mile. I don't think that's that's barely it's not bad. cost of living right now with your inflation with where we're at. So. That's kind of my new standard. Been doing this for a long time, and I kind of always try to lower my price and lower my price, and it, it caught up with me. So there is a cost of living increase that probably will happen about every year until we can get our head above water with these increases. Mm -hmm. But it's not drastic, but it is something to be noted, so you guys are aware of. You're not the only thing that yes, costs. Yes, I, I know. I know. <laughs> I just have to say that just so <laughs> nobody's shocked. But there will be this put together after we've agreed to where we're at and you want to move forward, there'll be a, a full on quote, a lot cleaner than this. Okay. And then subject to anything changing and then him and I will go back and forth. I will be starting up very soon. So it'll be hard for me to get, it'll be more once we finally get here, which estimated land time will be about similar to last year, probably more into June, first part of June, I'm hoping if weather this may holds together. Um, that's the timing that I'm uh, down here to do Madison well, Grant Wells. I see, I see grass and fork, which I'm on. Well, a little creek, a little deer creek. I'm going to watch and see how I, this goes. I mean, motion. we need to keep it clean together and everything. Uh, 
I'll watch and see. Right. I don't want to get. You know, I'm ready to spray them every year. Yes. I, I, I know, <laughs> um, but we're trying to stretch the dollar as much yeah, as we can. Boys, and so, right. I'm, do you want it back on, Gordon? If there's money in the fund, do you want Grassy or them back on? Yes, I would, because I don't talk them into. We'll put it on today. I mean, I, that's that's why I brought Chad forward. These these three ditches, I know where they're at, and I, I don't want to even grow them on because we have a problem. So, if you want to add them on, let's add them right on there. We got money to do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I can check. I and think we've got money to do it. So, so the 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 other side when we have this because I do multiple sprains we have different programs for every county but i mentioned earlier with a couple of board members that there's a county i've been in for 20 years and we do it every single year they just they will not pull off because the farmers do not want it off we're not there yet on the rotation so i'm trying to stretch the dollars as much as possible but when we come in in that situation where we throw in a chemical called milestone that helps it's a preventative weed control and so it, it helps if nothing's really up, it keeps teasel and Canadian thistle from coming back the next year. It's developed for roadside spraying. It's a really, really good product, but it's three hundred dollars a gallon too. So I go there on Taylor Creek, start up their sewer plant. They need to start there and get down through that first batch there for the sewer plant. I mean, it, it needs it again. You got that on there. Yeah, the, the the top the top section of Taylor Creek's on here. Yeah, yeah. You want? I don't have a problem. And that thousand feet down on me that just got cleared, it's on there too. Yeah. It'll be the second time it's been sprayed. Yeah. But get it under control. Once you get it under control, uh, get the grass thick. It helps yeah, with yeah. with the preventative of brush and weeds coming. Right. But we, know, we might be able to skip a year, but. But some of these you got to get under control first. Mm -hmm. I, if we got money in the grassy fork, Little Creek, and Little Deer Creek, I would like to see them sprayed again, and we'll, I'll watch them closer. But I don't want to give it all a can. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we got the I, money there. I, I, and, uh, that's my proposal, but I, I, I come in with a. I want to give you the most bang for your buck and stretch it if I can, but it's still the same scenario. You're not, the, the type of products that I use is still going to get a benefit yeah. on, on getting the grass thick and just it's, grass only banks. It's hard when they cut, when somebody comes in to cut trees off a bank, it's hard to get them to tore down the stumps and so on and so forth. It's the most important you thing you can do. If you don't get them while they're still fresh, then you got to spray. Yeah. Because if you don't, you'll have a fresh yeah. loose yeah. there. And they're hard to they're hard to control when I get a, a sapling coming out of that because the product I use goes through the leaves and it's tapping into the roots that are thirty feet down. So as soon as you kill one little sapling, another one will come off that stone. So mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. I think you're having an issue or and he mentioned on Matthew's ditch the part from Sims Franklin over to the first road, I think where all them trees were, it mentioned grinding, which I presume basically means the trees need cut again. Yeah. So that, that, those big trees are sprouting back quicker than his spraying is killing. In some places, but then there's a lot that I, and I wish I would've take, taken more pictures of these areas. And I, I know the barbarian and, and a few other ones that were like, I don't know what we're doing. I said, told the guys, make a statement and let's see what we can do. And they look totally different than they did in 2020. There, there is an impact of difference and they do look better, so. So this 2023 column is your recommendation plus the addition of uh, Luger Creek uh, tributaries as well as Pipe Creek. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Luger Creek and Pipe Creek. Where'd you get those? Isn't that where? Uh, which ones did you want to add in for? Oh, um, Grassy Fork. Okay. Little Creek. Little Creek and Little Deer Creek. Little Deer Creek. Okay, okay that's three. Yeah. My bad. I knew there was an addition, but I. Okay. I'm spending a lot of money, but I feel like they're complaints. 
I don't want to keep them because I know not everybody's praise. I do, but yeah. So we've got those you recommended additions. That's what I Because I am three and then and there again you can look right away the, the quote that'll come through is just a set increase from the previous what you hear these things under control look pretty well stay under control well there's you don't get them under control and, and these guys cut stuff off and then next week they'll come by and put cord on or something on this stuff it's almost too long mm -hmm. yeah or the drive so are you good with that that lineup for the season then? I think we probably should make that a formal motion to have it have it on our minutes. Second. Mr. Cates has made a motion to accept the uh, 23 uh, list uh, with the additions that have been uh, put in. <laughs> Any questions on that? Hearing none, all those in favor would say aye. 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 I will take carry. Got close to the same. Put it in right. Thank you. You guys are forced to keep working together. Yeah. 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 Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you can give me stuff to go look at. I'll be fine with it. But yeah. I appreciate working with the county. And, uh, we'll be in uh, mid June, first of June, and go from there. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, John. Yep. All right. Jan. Are you, uh, you have any other items up next? I know area plan is with us. Area plan, and then uh, uh, Martin Brecht will want to speak today about the solar. Oh, okay. All right, uh, let's go ahead with the uh, area plan. What do you need to do? You guys wanted us here. Is that for the... Uh, For the not. Uh, oh, Kenny, Kenny wanted to know clarification. Yeah. Clarification. Yeah. And, and that Raymond's that, that map you have, Raymond's highlighted the new parcel that goes through there in orange. It's hard to pick out. Now, it's, I'm sure it's not been surveyed. This is this all on paper. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess yeah. maybe you can bring us up to date because we're having we're having this alleged survey markings and while while there's items going on with the survey and parceling and things like that our our concern or at least our comments have been uh the uh, judicial findings still benefit us it was based on the original work and it it, it carries no matter what what happens uh with the breaking up of parcels Whoever that original finding was against, they still the have parent to take care track, of it. The parent track. So can, can you guys just bring us up to date on on this division that has happened? Um, this this was brought into the office in the first part of October of last year, um, and I immediately went to Ryan because I knew we were, you guys were having problems with them. And he sent an email to Mark and uh, we went ahead and did this split. This, um, and I approved it the 6th of October and that was the last I heard anything on it. Well, and I, you know, we, I just put that text together because I thought, I know I told someone, I know I did, so I was looking <laughs> through emails, uh, but yeah, she, she brought it to me and, and that's, I brought it to your attention and you can see our conversation there. Breaking up of, of the parcels really technically has nothing to do with us, right? No. What? No. Regulated ditch, it would. Yeah, right. But see, we've been all through court, and time after time we've told him that our easement stopped just 
maybe 100 feet down from the obstruction. It is a natural creek from there on. Mm -hmm. You know, other than this is landlocked, and the, and the theory is that he didn't pay his ditch assessment that the court ordered, then, you know, he could give us this parcel, which will be no use for the county to sell because it's landlocked. I don't know what the theory or the thought was to, to put this on the parcel other than maybe try to get out of the assessment. You know, it, it, it don't match, the, at the end, it doesn't match the creek. It goes up to that other lock. The ditch is going off the other direction, you know. And we never wanted to go, we don't have a right to go any farther than about 100 feet south, west, downstream on the natural creek. And him and the attorney, they've been told over and over that that's not ours to deal with, you know. Yeah. I'm sure it's not been surveyed, it's just been plotted because there's too many angles and stuff. It's, there's no stakes out there on this, this parcel. The creek's not in that area, right? It's a off of the creek. What? Some of it? Most of it follows the creek. Follows the creek. Okay. It's just, it'd be up here. The top right hand corner. See where it comes up to this lot here, the creek goes right here. Mm -hmm. So. That would, if that would become accessible, then you could use it. But I've, I've just never seen a creek split off into its own parcel and be landlocked if, if it does well, get sold. Well, if you've got a second five foot of easement on both the sides side of it, you're not sure you've got, you're in this landlocked deal. No, it, it doesn't affect the drainage board. We can still go in there and work if there's I something we need to do. What I'm saying is, you could be on part of Ox wife's ground and part of the other guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, this, this has been approved or not approved? Yeah, this is approved. It was recorded, I believe, October well, 7th I'll, of last year. Yeah, if you look at the time. If I got over the drainage dips, how I just plot it out and and then I could turn it over to somebody else. I mean, right? I didn't follow you there. Well, I've got an open ditch. Uh -huh. And this is not an open ditch, but it is. It's an easement. It's a creek. Creek. And if I don't want to, I don't know what his idea is, but it's not a very good one. Well, the idea is you don't want to pay the bill. It's a tax. You know, we put the, we put the taxes put against these taxes that for what the on the parent track court. that we went to court on. Yes, yes. And after and we went to court. court. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, then we played games. As far as my concern, it should have never been approved by area planning before it comes to the drainage board because we've got a judgment against the thing. First thing I did, Kim, you got it in your hands there. Uh, First thing I did was was go to Mark. Well, ultimately, he can play as many games as he wants to. Um, we have our easement right of way. Um, and if, if he decides he's not going to pay his taxes, we are going to file on the parent track. Parent track. The whole and, deal. And that's going to hurt him. The whole deal. Yeah. See, so you know, here, here's a just for Gordon, see all these information. This is the track that was split out. This is the survey and all these points and, and tangents and there's never been any stakes or anything put all there. It's just on paper. There's no stakes out there defining this property. That'd be thousands of dollars worth of survey work. This is just a survey is just on paper. I guarantee you there's no stakes out there. Either that or they went down through there with the, the drone. Yeah. So he had half an idea where the creek's at. No, he had to do that or he wouldn't have it even. You can get that off the topo line. Yeah, if you take away the trees and a dry spot. I haven't run this by an attorney since I didn't want to spend any money, but ultimately um, we still have the upper hand. We have a, a signed court order and, and we won. I understand that, okay. But ultimately, I don't think area plan is responsible to us unless there's a question on 
our um, right of way. Is that fair to say? Right. And that, that was our concern. You want to need to work a little closer with us. Okay, that's more I think. I can see a can of worms being opened up like this. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. The intent is there. I'm, I'm saying not being with it. But oh. somebody's going to. I got to open this to me. I want to. I know it's on me, but I don't want it on me. I want it to just be somebody else's. I, you don't parcel it off and sell it, right? Yeah, parcel it off and sell it. You can't farm it. Can't farm it. Can't do anything that's in the floodway. Right. So, see, you see, I see a potential. So if he problem. plans on giving us this back instead of paying his ditch tax, he's thinking, okay, I won. Nobody can do anything with it anyway. Nobody's going to want it. That was the whole theory for from uh, Miller and Associates coming up with this. I'm sure it was. Well, uh, it cost us two hundred. Change and it only cost him 90, but he's going to do everything he can to keep from paying it. But does, does the county? If we have held this thing up <clears throat> until he paid the, the uh, assessment, we, we couldn't do that unless it was part of the court order. And you know, hindsight's going to be 2020. If we have to do this again, um, we can put some kind of caveat in for the judge's ruling and ask for that. But I don't think we have any muscle to say you can't you can't work on your property or, or enhance it or change it up unless the, the court order that's involved with it says so. So so would the county let him sell that parcel that he created with, off the ditch? It has its own parcel number. How, how, how can we stop someone, a landowner, from selling a, a piece of their property unless it's tied up in litigation, which it's not? Right. The finding is, is there. So so he could sell all the way down to just five acres, and then when we go to court to get his judgment of $97,000, it would only go against the five acres? I wouldn't think so. Still goes against the parent. parent no, but this didn't, didn't went to court about. But if he splits that 60 acres up into 10 different parcels between the time that he gets ordered to pay it, then you're going to have to go back on those 10 other landowners and try to uh, tell them. I don't that. think so. I'm not an attorney, and I don't did say that on Holiday and Express last night. <laughs> uh, what I would recommend is, since we have had litigation with this particular situation, we can advise the area plan that any type of work on this area needs to be flagged so that the drainage board is made known about it. Is that fair? Yeah, we should have known about this. You know, I, that's my feeling. Okay. Well, well, I, I know Gordon and Kenny was our representatives in Huntington Court. They heard everything that I heard from everybody. It's all a game. Sure. And it's been all along. And if, if we'd have held this up and that, you know, we got to go to the drainage board or something. You know, some of his representatives have been in here or whatever. Okay. And we might have wanted our attorney because, you know, I don't approve of landlocked splits. No. They don't make sense. But they're just, the way they've done this, the way they <clears throat> put this on. You know. Try to beat the system. You're just trying to be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he just make it fun of it. I'm on this piece of three. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I got with Mark Quick. I mean, you know, even Brendan, you can read in it, you know, they were being pushy. They were insistent. Let's get this thing, you know. I thought I, I don't want to do anything that's gonna screw you guys up. Yeah. Uh, Ultimately, so unless we have a court order specifically on this, and, and I don't think we need to go there until he decides he's not paying his taxes. Right. So if he wants to take out and sell that off, he could. Technically, I would like, like I said, I think we need to go ahead and authorize the, uh, the president to send a, a letter to Harry Plan regarding this area that's been litigated, and if there's any more movement on it, that we need to be made known before action's taken. I, I just concerned that the 
kind of you're going to get screwed out of the other ninety dollar, ninety thousand dollars, ninety some thousand. Now, if he if he sold that parcel that's just connected to up there, then yeah, that would be you're going to be in the floodplain the whole way. But that would be another access to the McCoy property. But he also lives on the dead end road of that subdivision where it was my my thought that he he was going to extend that road into his property and that'd be his access because you couldn't get back there in, in a wet season to that south property even if you sold it to him it'd be of no value here's here's what i don't want us to do i don't want us to get ulcers over something that might happen until he does he takes an aggressive action to again for the direction of the court we have to we just we go on, but when he does, then we come after him. Well, the ferry planning is advised of anything on this. They need to get let us know before they move on anything. Okay. On this. Someone comes to file something, how long do you have before you have to respond to them? I usually try to give them like two to three days before I do anything. I don't think we have a set time. It, it basically says that that we will. Uh, well, what's the wording on it? And it will act in a timely fashion. Is what it says. It doesn't say two weeks. It doesn't say it is we. In a timely week. fashion, if we put a, a requirement on you to inform us, could could take a few more days than two or three. It'd be like any other development or something that comes in. Uh, at the beginning stages when we would send it out to the health department and drainage board it says that we shall move in a timely fashion it's once it gets to the next step that the dates actually get started putting on 60 days 30 days you know beginning it's just a timely fashion okay all right more questions for our april plan all right thank you for your time appreciate it all right, Mr. Uh, Rankle has some uh, statements or questions on solar? Yes. Uh, a few months ago, you guys put a six month moratorium on solar on this draft form. Where does that, where do we stand on that? I'm sorry. All, you had a unanimous vote on draft four or a six month moratorium. It was not a unanimous vote. Except for you. Right. Right. So what, you just overrode them and went on? Uh, the drainage board does not have authority to do a moratorium, only commissioners do. So you're, you just ignored that? You know, you're I shared that with our, uh, with our commissioners and we did not act on it. Three commissioners? That's correct. You voted uh, for draft four and you just left the drainage board out. We passed on the desire that they had and we did not act on it. Why? It, was that not important? I believe that, that the executive has the authority to enact or not to enact and we did not. It wasn't important? Is that what you're saying? That's what you said. I didn't say that. I know you didn't. But essentially, that's what you're saying. And Myron, we're not going to play games anymore. No, okay. You have, All right. You like yeah, to share, please do. Let me say something. I just got two emails. These last heavy rains in o Ohio, they showed two, and the commissioners probably got these. I don't know. They were, these dra uh, air, uh, solar farms were flooded absolutely flooded and going over on their neighbors. I can forward them to you, if not. But right now, as we stand with draft four, if you hand this over to the solar companies, they can essentially do the same thing without any responsibility to the drainage tile. Um, I don't believe that's true. Well, is it in draft four that there's a protection there? In draft four, you have to remember that the drainage board 
approves what's going to be going in on a farm. If it is not approved, it does not go back to the area plan for any action until we are satisfied. And of course, until you're satisfied, Chris, you're going to be satisfied with what the solar company wants. Um, that's your conjecture, and that's not yeah. true. Yes, it this is. This board has to decide if I, it meets the requirements we have set. And right. then once it is approved, it goes back to area plan. What's, the, what's the requirements you've set? Uh, we have been compiling a particular thing. We talked about no solar equipment within the maximum drain easement uh, on any um, uh, assessed drain. All ground transmit transmission lines must be chained in. Any mutual drains or private tile damage by installation and or installation equipment will be repaired equal to or better than can an existing infrastructure. The company uh, field representative has to have a clear ground walkthrough with the surveyor or their representative. Sign off acknowledgement by a company agent that everything is correct. Water retention plan with drainage board sign off before it's approved. Uh, and uh, we have a couple other items. One was even brought up in this, this meeting here where we will do a uh, public hearing to make sure that we don't have mutual drains that go through that property. Mutual drainage. So Correct. what about the drainage on that property? That would include them. Their, their the private drain. Yeah, the private drain is actually a, a contract with the, uh, the company. They, they have a, an agreement, which I haven't seen because I'm not a lease leasing, but they have an agreement to repair tile as well. I, I talked to one of the solar companies after the 26th Street meeting at the high school, and it was brought up, you weren't there, uh, afterwards about how we're going to uh, identify the tile and the drainage or the uh, solar company said with a T rod. So just we'll, we'll identify with T rod. We've got 200 and some acres out there that we used to farm good flat black, black ground around this substation on 9 and 450. We don't own it. We farmed it for years. It is tiled systematically everywhere. This company that bought it out of New Jersey a family trust is wanting to sign it up in solar. And how are, how, are, how are the neighbors and everybody going to be protected from what happened in Ohio with those two during, uh, solar farms? I mean, those are potential floodplains, wetlands, and after, after that first solar company that uh, Ryan showed us when it's being built, it's all grown up now. Big tall weeds, brush, abandoned, or the same as. Solar company didn't do what they said they were going to do. Well, again, I don't know what there was in their, their agreements, but again, anything that is a, an assessed, assessed tile has to be maintaining our standards Anything that is a mutual drain, again, we will notify and determine where those mutual drains are. On their property, then they have to continue to work with, with who they're leasing the ground to to take care of their property. And who's gonna hold them accountable? Uh, on, on the uh, mutual and the uh, assessed tiles, it's, it's the county. The drainage board, the commissioners? Drainage board. Ultimately, the commissioners, because we get sued for everything in the county. Well, the commissioner's got a big job ahead of you, the way this draft four is right now. Because essentially, draft four is, we drew up draft seven for the solar company to protect, protect our tile, our property, the setbacks, and everything. You guys turn it down and sit back draft four. Essentially, draft four is given the solar company whatever they want. I, I appreciate your statement, but I also disagree with it because we've already been told by some of the solar companies that draft four is not a solar friendly ordinance. Oh, really? 
Yes. I'd like, I'd like to talk to whoever that is on the, the solar company. Be, and be happy to get you their information. Yeah. Steve Wright set up a meeting at the high school that we could talk to all the solar company. He gave them the questions, said that we had, or he had cards that we could ask questions afterwards. Then he said they disappeared. We never got a, a chance to talk to anybody from Solar Company. Steve asked the questions, they answered. They already had the questions. No, they didn't. He told me they did not. Well, I know he told you that. But they did have the questions. We found out. I, I, uh, I'm going to kindly disagree with you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to argue with you on that. I'm just telling you what the truth is. The fact is, I mean, we've got we've got a serious problem in Grant County by handing everything over in draft four to the solar company. And you know that, Ryan. You and the commissioners all together on that. Thank you. So if you want my opinion, Mayor, and I will tell you it's one of the best solar ordinances in the state. That what? It's one of the best in the state. Well, I got 300 plus hours in it. That's my my thoughts. Well, why? Why hasn't the, let me ask this, why haven't the commissioners had an open meeting with the public and tell us about, you know, when the solar company met with you, what this is? I mean, nobody knows. Jim, Margaret, Margaret. we spent weeks listening to folks battling back and forth, as well as listening. We're not going that way anymore. There's no need to. They should have done that to start with. I mean, people called you, yeah. But why don't you meet with them? Come forward and have the questions. Answer the questions as to what what this solar is going to do to Grant County and how you're going to be protected and everything. Being a commission, I mean, we're paying you twenty five thousand dollars a year. To Not work. that much, no. Yes, we are. No. How much? Twenty two. 22, okay. And you get paid every time you come to one of these meetings. You do. I don't know. The whole board does. And you never went to any of the court hearings on the op case. Uh, yeah, I was in discussions and, and in mediation as well. Yeah, you went to Indianapolis. No, you, you just you know, don't, if you want to speak on solar, fine. But but don't don't go rambling around. We have another meeting here in about five minutes. I'm not rambling around. I'm telling you, as commissioners, we hired you. We're paying you to represent Grant County. All of Grant County. And sir. the first thing you should have done was be transparent and be available to all that had a meeting, the people, to let them know what's going on. You didn't do it. You won't do it. I've met Why won't plenty, you do it? I've met with plenty of folks. Plenty of folks. Plenty How to have of folks. Out of, out of how many thousand? There have not been a thousand people. Yes, there has. There okay. are. Myron, if you want to talk to me about this later, I feel free. Feel free to schedule an appointment. But we're uh, we're done with our uh, drainage have, board meeting. Can I put in just a little bit that the drainage board tries to interpret the Indiana drainage code? according to state regulations and a lot of that will protect the regulated tiles as far as solar coming in and cutting off regulated tiles the indiana code will stop them from doing that yeah, i'm going to try to do my part and drainage board member and we're going to make sure they do what they're supposed to i'm hoping and they can't do unless we approve it I, I presented so to each one's going to be unique and individual. Posey, Posey County had a solar had a solar uh, project that came in, and I, I printed off for the drainage board that act, their actual drainage plan, and it was a two year study, and the actual drainage plan for that project was about that. Day. You guys remember me handing you guys? Still got it. So let's Posey County. Well, I'm just as an example of what a drainage plan is going to look like. It's generally going to be about a two-year study, and it's going to be about that thing. So, <clears throat> actually, you can't you can't pass draft four until you have that all completed, mm -hmm. right? Well, that, that's an actual project. Mm -hmm. 
That's not the order. Or on a Friday. <laughs> Just as an example. And I'll, I'll send you a copy of it so you can look at it. But the, these two flooded solar uh, projects over in Ohio, right there, they said, this is what solar company done. And they have already left and sold it to somebody else. So. I was in that meeting you're talking to over to high school. I was in that. And what got done, the guy from Apex, I walked up there and I talked to him and he talked to me. And I think, it's my opinion, yeah. and here's where a problem is. You live in Florida or Texas or someplace, they send you a thing to lease your property, okay? You don't, you inherit it, you don't know where the dishes are. But he said, he came to me that if there was a private tile or something went through their solar farm, they would replace a new one before they put the solar farm in. Now, whether they will or not, I don't know. It's going it's all over the test contract and all of the written paper, and, and it's a complicated, very complicated deal. But it's just like we got a, a dish that's, that's uh, you can't hardly tell because the sun was in the wrong room. That's four foot deep and uh, 18 inch tile. Yeah, okay. big tile. And that went that went kaput this spring in those three inch rain. Okay, and you know they'll sign the contract with me, say one thing. They'll sign the contract with Gordon and says another. Okay, and uh, it's just it's just what it is. But really, like here, my question, and I've got a meeting with these jokers. Friday. My question is, if my tile goes underneath their solar farm, okay, and it breaks down, and I'm here to tell you, you can put four of those stands of these against in this hole, okay? If this thing is in the middle of their solar farm, who's going to fix it? They are. And I thought I heard that the cables are going to be four feet deep. That's about where all the tiles are. Yeah, that's mine. But I mean, they're wanting to come over there around Swayze, the north of Swayze, and so on and so forth. And, you know, I, I don't. I'm trying to stay in the middle, but you don't have to give them any grandage. You don't have to give them any ground. Huh? You don't have to give them any ground. That's me. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, when they send it to somebody in Florida that inherited the grant, mm -hmm. they don't care. All they want is the money. Mm -hmm. They don't even know where the tile lives because they inherited the money. They don't. And the guy farming it can look at it. Last Friday was a perfect day. You can sit out there and you can pick the tile out just like you picked my fingers out okay, in the afternoon. <laughs> You know, gentlemen, we have exceeded our time, and the okay. next group is wanting to come in. So, All right. thank you for your concerns, and we will uh, will be reflected on the record. But the uh, the main thing is the tile that's on, on that ground. They're not going to locate it. They're going to stop function. They're going to turn it into a wetland, and all around, that's exactly what's going to happen. Thank you for your concern, and we'll pass that on to anybody. We're going to have to try to work with you, especially on the county tile. I don't know about the private tile. You're going to, you're going to have to have the farmers, men farmers, work with them to locate these tiles. I mean, it's just... All right. We, like I said, we have exceeded, and I need to encourage a motion for uh, the jury. Second. Motion, Mr. Uh, Cates. Second, Mr. Goff. 
All those in favor would say aye. 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 Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> you got 15 seconds, Mark. Uh, 12. 11. Yeah, let it let it You were close. <laughs> Jail. Well, here, this is the thing. Can't yeah.